The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of BoatTest.com and its test captain. Rigger needed to fill a hole between their 18 and 21 foot boats and they did it with the 196 Captiva and to appeal to a wider audience they made both an outboard and a stern drive version. Today we're going to take the outboard version on a full test. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. At the stern we've got a Yamaha 115. The 196 Captiva is rated for up to 200 horsepower. There are dual swim platforms on either side and a very deep motor well and that's a nice feature when you go to do some servicing on the engine because you can stand right in front of the engine and do whatever you need to do. Notice how the hull extends past the transom where the engine is mounted. That should give us quicker times to plane. We'll see during our test feature. On the starboard side, a three-step reboarding ladder. The hatch has a handhold cut into it so you can aid yourself in getting out of the water. A Rinker 196 Captiva had a length overall of 19 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet and a draft of 34 inches. With an empty weight of 2,350 pounds, full fuel, two people and the Yamaha 115, we had a test weight of 3,416 pounds. Top speed came in at 6,000 RPM and 36.2 miles per hour. At that speed we had a fuel burn of 9.8 gallons per hour and we were getting 3.7 miles per gallon for a range of 140 miles. Best cruise came in at 5,000 RPM and 28.9 miles per hour where we had a 6.4 gallon per hour fuel burn while getting 4.5 miles per gallon for a range of 172 miles. Our time to plane was 4.7 seconds. We reached 20 miles an hour in 15.5 seconds and cruised through 30 miles an hour in 24.1 seconds. The 196 outboard seemed to be a little bit sluggish to me with just a 115 Yamaha on the back. It's rated for up to 200 horses, so I think you're gonna need to go up a little bit in horsepower right now. The 196 also holds 40 gallons of fuel, and that's a lot, but this is a prototype and Rinker is looking into a smaller tank size, so the reduced weight should enhance performance a bit. For turning performance, I find that the 196 carves through the turns quite nicely, and if you put the wheel hard over, the outboard will have you pivoting around in a little bit more than your own length. When you're trimming the 196 outboard, you want to bring the trim up to about the one-half mark. If you go up beyond that, you'll start to get some operator-induced oscillation. You won't find the spray going from the helm and moving back, but you will find a boost in speed as you bring the trim up. What I was most impressed with with the 196 was the way it handled our self-generated wakes. We would launch off and get a little air under the boat, but the re-entry was nice and soft, no pounding at all. The helm has a very uncluttered layout. Trim gauge over to the left-hand side. Tack and speedometer surrounding two-in-one gauge. Empty space just underneath the gauges. I'd like to see that be recessed so you have a place to put stuff. You won't fill up the drink holder over the right-hand side. Rocker switches. Ignition, accessory switch, and circuit breakers over on the right-hand side with a 12-volt supply. Option on this helm is the tilt steering. And there's also space for an optional depth finder and stereo remote. For visibility, the curve of the dash is still just below the bow, so it's not interfering with the horizon sight line at all. And I'm able to look through the windshield rather than look at the windshield frame. And when I'm up on the optional bolster, I'm above it all anyway. Well, that's our full test and performance review of the Rinker 196 Captiva Outboard. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.